Hello, my name is Michael Williams and I work for McKenzie Health and I'm the Recreation Therapist. Today's presentation is on Recreation Therapy, Empowering Mind, Body After a Stroke. Let the recovery journey begin. Today's objectives to discuss the benefits of participating in Recreation Therapy, describing how Recreation Therapy improves patients' ability to reintegrate socially, reactivate physically and mentally, and to improve mood. A poll, a show of hands. How many of you at times are by themselves, but if given an opportunity, would rather be with people because you feel better, supported, and motivated? Question two. Who has a leisure activity or interest that brings you pleasure and that you look forward to? something you can participate in daily or weekly while at the hospital or when you're at home. Not including work or watching TV, but an interest such as crossword puzzles, reading, cards, gardening, painting, pets, physical activities, spiritual needs, to name a few. Question three, show of hands. Who believes it takes more than medications to decrease a patient's illness or disability? such as a stroke, a fractured hip, depression, or general weakness. And lastly, question four, show of hands. Do you feel a patient's recovery could be assisted and enhanced by staying more active physically, socially, intellectually, and spiritually with other people going through the same or similar illness as your own? Recreation therapy's purpose. If you found yourself answering yes to the previous questions, then you will have a better understanding of the therapeutic benefits for patients by participating in group programs that will enhance their recovery. Our purpose, recreation therapy's purpose, reactivating the body, reintegrating socially with others while improving mood. Trends after a stroke. Deterioration in participation in leisure activities has been reported as one of the primary problems for people experienced after a stroke. Lack of interest, moods such as depression, self-motivation, self-confidence and satisfaction are several barriers that limit participation. Trends after a stroke, the stress factor, effects on body such as headaches, fatigue, breathlessness, effects on the mind such as worrying, negativity, nightmares, stress. Effects on emotions such as irritability, anxiety, anger, frustration. Effects on behavior such as loss of appetite, restlessness. Cognitive symptoms after a stroke. Disorientation to date, time and place. Decreased alertness and problem solving. Shortness attention span. Decreased ability to learn and remember. Decreased ability to follow directions. Physical symptoms after a stroke. Decreased endurance, tolerance to activity, and sitting tolerance. Limited strength, ability to perform activities of daily living. Impaired focus, concentration, and impaired balance. Psychological and social symptoms after a stroke. Depression, sadness, isolation, loss of confidence, fear, anger, frustration, stress, loss of independence, damaged self-image, uncertainty about the future, and decreased sense of control. Treating symptoms with an activity-based strengths model approach. By using the patient's strengths, what they can achieve post-stroke, and reinforcing these abilities, we set out together on a recovery journey. The patients may make small gains early on while looking towards larger gains in the future. Goal setting, achievements made, stress, self-evaluation, and resource awareness are all discussed regularly. Treating post-stroke symptoms if medically stable to participate. The common symptom, low activity tolerance. Building towards out of bed one to three hours of therapy for deconditioned or depressed patients working on improvements like strengthening, endurance, balance, transfers, ambulation, cognitive stimulation, and mood enhancement. Filling the gap, GAP, recharging the batteries, 
providing one to three hours daily of opportunities for patient leisure time when not in OT, PT, or SLP services. Filling the gap continued. Filled with purposeful reactivation and reintegration techniques, GAP group activity participation focused to improve functional abilities that minimize or eliminate the effects of illness, disability, while improving mood, establishing a positive outlook, and quality of life. Treatment sessions, daily group sessions are offered that empowers patients to achieve and build on diminished skills such as memory, improved cognitive, physical functioning, social skills, and mood enhancement. Treatment sessions continued. Recreation therapy is a form of therapy treating patient symptoms. However, like all other therapies, it is not a cure. The benefits are tremendous. Just ask any of the patients who have participated already in these group treatment sessions. Recreation therapy morning program. Mondays, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, movement to music group. This group has many benefits, including physical skills enhancement, range of motion, gross fine motor skills, and hand-eye coordination. Recreation therapy morning group continued. Tuesdays, 10.30 to 11.30, spiritual wellness songs of faith group. Benefits include decreased anxiety, promoting social skills, and coping. Recreation therapy schedule continued Wednesdays, 10 to 11 o'clock. Cognitive cardio. Benefits include memory, problem solving, orientation. Recreation therapy schedule Thursday mornings, 10 to 11 o'clock. Brain fitness. Benefits include multitask, mind body task, improving concentration, focus, and attention to task. Recreation Therapy Morning Schedule Fridays 10 to 11 Art Therapy Benefits include Coping Skills, Leisure Awareness, De-Stressing, Anxiety Reducer, and Self-Expression. Our afternoon schedule for Recreation Therapy Mondays to Fridays from 2 to 3 are Cognitive and Social Skill Training in Small Groups. Benefits include Social Skill Development, Building Self-Confidence, coping skills, anxiety reduction, problem-solving skills, memory, concentration, and activity tolerance building. Leisure counseling. Occasionally, we also leisure counsel. Leisure counseling or life skills coaching sessions, we like to call them, involve discussions, changing one's lifestyle from couch potato and activity or reducing stressful situations in life and reinforcing them towards creating a more purposeful, self-sustaining, positive, healthy, wholeness outlook. Leisure counseling continued. Healthier lifestyle awareness. Five steps to a healthy lifestyle. Get active for an hour or more each day. Choose to drink water more often. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Turn off the TV or computer and get active. Eat fewer snacks and select healthier alternatives. A few tools from our team's tool belt. As you can see, the doctor, I have some slides of their tools from the nurse, from the occupation therapist, from the physiotherapist, from the recreation therapist. Examples of cognitive group, cognitive cardio pictures. Physical group example pictures. Spiritual, social, emotional group example pictures. The positive influence of the group. Treatment groups have a high level of success because of the support, motivation, and role modeling dynamics that exist between the participating patients within the group. No one wants to be left out. Everyone gives it their all. The 10 golden group rules while participating. Number one, keep an open mind. Never be critical of others. Our motto is, I will try to do it. We will never say, I can't do it. 
Be honest with yourself and others. Become the most positive and enthusiastic person you can. Commit yourself to constant improvements. Stop blaming others. Take responsibility of every area of your life. Treat everyone you meet like you want to be treated. Be forgiving of yourself and others. Don't do anything that won't make your mom proud. Together, everyone achieves more. T-E-A-M, team. Patients and staff working as a team or partners to achieve a common goal, the patient's health and well-being. Criteria for admission into recreation therapy. The patients must be willing to participate in group sessions. The patients cannot have cognitive behavioral concerns that are disruptive to the group. The patients must be able to tolerate one hour minimum of group activity. The treatment will have potential for desired outcomes such as improving functional levels, mood, and social skills. Frequently asked questions. How can I get referred to recreation therapy groups? Referrals can come from healthcare professionals, family, or the patients themselves. Who will transport me to the group? That will be the recreation therapist or our volunteers. How long can I participate in the groups? That can be as long as you're willing to participate. One week, two months, three months for the whole length of your stay in the hospital. What is the size of your groups? In the mornings, our typical group size runs from eight to 10 patients, and the afternoons are smaller, four to six patients. Question five, are there services in the community that when I am discharged from the hospital, I am allowed to continue to participate in activities and programs as independently as possible? The answer to that question is yes. Contacting the Community Care Access Center, having a case manager, will link you to other services such as adult day programs. Lasting thought, believe you can achieve. The road to success requires your determination, self-belief, knowledge, faith, the right attitude, self-esteem. Thank you very much and remember, believe, belong and become.